Hey everyone, and welcome to the monthly governance call for NFTX. Uh, we have this call each month on the first Monday, uh, so today is the sixth of October. Um, we'll start off with uh, passing across to our, our head of product, Nick, to talk through a little bit about the roadmap, um, and then we may have a bit more of a discussion later on and open the floor up for any of the guests uh, attending today to ask any questions. So uh, I'll pass it across to you, Nick. Sure, cool. Um, yeah, so quite a lot of uh, features that have been released and are in line to be released. So I just wanted to give a bit of an update of what's coming and, and sort of roughly when. Um, one of the bigger improvements we're making, hopefully deploying tomorrow, will be filters. So each vault will have their own metadata filters, something uh, similar to OpenSea. Uh, in the sense you can now break down every single asset that's in the vault and it works incredibly smoothly. So really excited to get that one out, um, as I say, aiming for tomorrow. Um, then we're on to L2 infrastructure. So we're currently deploying to Palm, which is like a EVM compatible uh, L1. And uh, that will set us up for deployments to other EVMs, um, sort of as and when uh, they are uh, they make sense to move to. So interested for community's feedback on, you know, whether we should be looking at Arbitrum or Polygon, uh, BSC and, and other EVM chains. Uh, so that's 95% uh, of the way there. We're just debugging some uh, deployment uh, contracts on Palm and then we should be good to go uh, sort of next week time. Um, after that, we're looking at single-sided staking, which is something we've had uh, in the pipeline for a while now and getting close to being able to deploy um, so that will allow users to not just stake liquidity tokens, but also to stake their own vault tokens. So that will remove any risk of impermanent loss. It will be much easier to reason about for people that are new to DeFi. As something we've seen over the last few weeks is that liquidity providing, um, we make it very accessible. Um, and in a sense that does lead to some confusion because there's a fair amount to understand about liquidity providing. Whereas when you're staking single-sided vault tokens, uh, there's not a lot to to have to understand to do that. So very excited to to roll that out. Um, and that should really help boost our inventory and, and uh, generate more fees uh, for vault uh, inventory providers and liquidity pro providers. After that, um, looking at swaps. So if you've been following the Genesis Mana Vault, uh, there's been an enormous amount of swapping going on there. Um, I think we're doing three and a half times the volume of, of OpenSea on that uh, particular vault, which is fantastic. And it's kind of revealed a very cool new use case for NFTX, which is, yeah, sort of uh, just swapping between assets. And it swaps are something we've had on the roadmap for a while, but I think this vault in particular has made it clear that this is going to be even more important. So uh, what swaps will allow us to do is rather than having to mint and redeem into a vault to swap uh, or sort of buy a uh, sell and then buy to swap, you will be able to do it in a single transaction and only take one uh, hit on the fees. Whereas right now you'd have to be, you take two hits on the fees. So that should make swapping much more efficient and open up that use case a lot more. Um, sort of tied into that open sea swaps. So uh, this is an idea from Alex, which will really help to keep our illiquid vaults uh, like, uh, valuable in the sense that when liquidity drops really low it's then very it, there's a lot of price impact when you're buying vault tokens to then redeem from the vault or, or trade in the vault so by allowing us to basically zap into OpenSea, buy the OpenSea floor asset and then swap it for an asset in the vault uh, we're able to keep the vaults active and generate fees even though um, there's no actual like underlying uh, sushi liquidity there. So overseas swaps and NFTX swaps are, are big. And then sort of moving further down the line, we're looking at profiles. So making NFTX a place where people can come to actually look at their wallets, transfer their ERC-721s and 1155s, and just get it like more of the OpenSea experience where you're no longer coming to NFTX just to trade, but you're coming here to just actually keep an eye on what you've what your inventory is. Um, and we think we can we can build out an experience that is actually much nicer and smoother than than having to manage like all the stuff you get in OpenSea, which is becoming increasingly like challenging for a lot of people, I think. Um, and then th this is sort of taking us to the end of the year. Um, and then after that, we're looking at much kind of higher, uh, bigger picture stuff around orders uh, that allow 
uh, vault to not just have floor items, but to trade up the stack. So um, allowing trades between floors and anything uh, to, to grails uh, based on floor pricing. So users can price uh, higher value assets in the vault token. So let's say a hoodie punk uh, could be priced in floor punk. Uh, so someone can make an order to sell their hoodie punk into the uh, to the floor vault um, for punk tokens, uh, which again think we think we can open up a lot of use cases there, uh, drive a lot more volume, um, and again build stronger and deeper liquidity in our floor vaults. Uh, so yeah, there's like a fair amount to to get through on the uh, product feature side, and in in between all of that, we've got lots of extra fe little features to add in as well. So um, that's what's coming, uh, and. Outside of NFTX, we are getting a lot of interest from DeFi protocols as well to integrate uh, our deeper liquidity tokens like Punk. Um, so some very exciting stuff coming there soon. Um, and yeah, uh, I think we'll, we'll discuss a bit more of that later on as well. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Nick. Um, that was that was a great summary. Quite heavy going. Um, and uh, sorry, what's that? Quite heavy going, yeah. Oh yeah, I this thought you is, said you were going to keep going. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, no, and um, I'm happy to do a quick summary too. Uh, we didn't really prepare that much this week and chops away. Um, basically, I think we're, the token is basically trading like close to uh, book value for the Dow Treasury, which is a nice place to be because you can't really go any lower. You can only go up. Um, so yeah, we've just been grinding, um, from the team standpoint, you know, we have our dailies every day. I know I mentioned this on every governance call, but, um, yeah, if these calls ever seem light on content, it's because, you know, we're having standups every morning and talking through a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, I think we're in a great position still. Um, we've had two part-time hires recently, um, one, front end infrastructure and then one more like back end data stuff. Uh, and those were both internal hires, like, um, you know, people already on the team that, that found those guys. So that's really cool. And yeah, uh, as far as the roadmap goes, like we're not really, a lot of people have been coming by discord and asking like, you know, if we have an official roadmap or anything like that. Uh, and we don't, and um, I probably should put something light together uh, just, for people that you know want to see it but for the most part we're not really planning uh much more than like three to four months in the future just because things change so quickly and um we keep on you know seeing our product getting used in different ways uh, you know like a month ago we were talking about like maybe we'll have a minting service that we'll start working on near the year end um, now like manifold has launched their minting service so you know that's one thing we don't have to worry about hopefully um, so, you know, the ecosystem keeps changing and, um, that's a good thing. And so, yeah, we don't want to plan more than like four months into the future, but coming up, we have like profiles and once profiles are done, uh, I think that opens up a lot of possibilities as far as, um, just other cool marketplace features, even stuff like rankings for like, who's providing the most liquidity, um, so that people can kind of compete, um, uh, within vaults themselves. And um, all that will be possible, like after we get our the profiles done with. Um, and yeah, I don't think there's much else. The last couple of days we've been doing some treasury stuff. Uh, we shut down the Glyph NFTX pool and also the Punk NFTX pool. Um, we put aside three Glyph tokens um, for single-sided staking, just so we don't get hit on in permanent loss too much. And there's about two left in the ETH pool. And now the punk ETH pool has about 15 punk and about 1500 ETH. And we have about 55 punk in the DAO. Um, so we're still kind of short on ETH, but we figured it was just, it made more sense to keep all the liquidity in the punk ETH and the glyph ETH pools, as opposed to having it split across um, the ETH and the NFTX pools. Um, and we were talking a little bit yesterday about the possibility of having some more kind of centralized treasury management, um, just like the ability to possibly buy into some other floors like Cool Cats, possibly Bored Apes, maybe Toads, 
um, just so that the DAO can help support some of the key like blue chip vaults, kind of like we do with Punk and Glyphs. Um, but I think Chop's going to be putting together a proposal just so that the community can kind of sign off on the like the core team having a bit more um, autonomy over how to spend treasury funds. Um, and of course, if people have concerns about that or whatever, we're happy to you know discuss those because um, we don't want to get too centralized. Um, yes, Javery, please speak. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, uh, OX Jacob in, uh, dropped in a question. It might be for Quag or for Nick, but I was just asking, will we use ceramic for profiles? I'm not familiar with ceramic. Um, yeah, neither am I. I'm actually curious no, what that is. Me neither. <laughs> um, if you want to drop a link in there. Um, ceramic oh, that's work. cool. Quag would actually probably like to know about that. Oh, Quag's here. Where is he? Yeah, he is. He is here. Yeah, I'm here. Cool. Also, to... like cooking dinner. <laughs> <laughs> right, no worries. Uh, I was just, one of the other things we've seen as well, on a, on a side note, is a, a few of the communities have been approaching us directly to uh, go onto their discords um, or jump into their Twitter spaces and talk to their communities about the liquidity pools that they've set up on NFTX. Just um, as a sounding board for them just to ask any questions like what happens to my NFT? How do I stake? Where do I get my money back? How are fees generated? How does this affect token drops? All the kinds of questions that your communities may have. Um, if, you are, if you are creating a pool or you have created a pool and there's some uncertainty around it, please do just jump into the Discord, ask questions um, and, and ask us if we can um, jump onto something similar, either an AMA on your own Discord or in a, a space or um, yeah, we're always here to to sort of help out and make sure that the that hurdle for your community and users isn't too high. Yeah, thanks, Javery. Sure, I'm just reading this. Oh, Quag, are you are you seeing the chat? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Quag's off. Cool. Yeah, I think we'll look at um, that. Yeah, well, one other thing I'll touch on quickly. Um, even though it's not like super positive, um, is just that like one thing that vaults have been struggling with lately is airdrops. Um, so basically like when NFTs become eligible for new NFTs, we're seeing people pull them from the vault, um, which is a problem. Um, basically to summarize the issue, there's, there's kind of two different types of airdrops. Um, one is when teams actually send you the new asset. Um, I, like an example of that would be like the serums with Bay C, like they actually sent out the serums to everyone. Um, but the other type of airdrop, which is more common, is what we've been calling a claim drop. Um, and that's basically like MeBits or like uh, Kennel Club. And how that works is you use the existing NFT and each existing NFT is eligible to claim one of the new NFTs. Um, so like how people could use their punks to claim a me bet. And the problem with those is that people can kind of come to the vault as soon as the claim drop happens and they can cycle through the, the vault and they can use every NFT out of the vault to claim one of the new NFTs. It's not so bad because the vault like the vault LPs at least earn like 5% on every cycle, on every item basically, but 5% still isn't that great. Um, so yeah, what we're seeing is that people like in anticipation of these drops, people are pulling their items from the vault, which yeah, kind of sucks. Um, we're working on solutions to this. There's, there's no easy solution. Um, the, the best thing we can do right now is kind of work with teams. So like we're working with the Wanderers team um, and they want to do a drop soon. And then they're going to set up a second, a separate co smart contract for liquidity providers and vault token holders. Uh, so yeah, it's great if communities that are doing drops and are concerned about this, we can definitely work with them. But as far as like a, a general solution, uh, we're still, we're, we're still working on trying to figure something out um, and then implementing it. And um, yeah. I don't know if anyone else has thoughts on that. I, I'm guessing. Alex, yeah. I think also uh, Penelope's are also um, uh, recognizing anyone that is a full token holder or 
part of their SLP as a full token holder and will also reward them with drops as well. Nice. So they're going nice. out of their way uh, to do that. I know Afrojoids are doing the same and Chibi Dinos are doing the same as well now. So it's, okay. it's good to see that the community is awesome. starting to, but that's with community led vaults. Mm -hmm. So if it's, uh, uh, well, yeah, the project led vaults, it's a bit harder if it's a community, if they're not aware of it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's great to see that. And like maybe the first step for us will be just making that easier for teams, like having some sort of airdrop tool or something, which takes vaults into account. Um, and as far as the vaults, which aren't as catered to by their project teams, uh, um, yeah, we'll keep on. It, it's really an engineering problem and a, a problem of figuring out how to distribute those assets. Um, so I, I think we'll, we'll keep working on it. And um, yeah, hopefully we come up with something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the other approach is like creating really valuable floor vaults, which is what we're doing. And then they kind of, the project, project totally. uh, developers have to kind of integrate knowing that there's a, a strong community behind each one. And, and also just increasing the amount of fees that vaults are earning. So by getting more foot yeah. traffic, lower spreads, uh, you know, fee, the vaults will start accruing more fees. And even if the vaults wind down around these drops, hopefully they'll gear back up right away afterwards yeah. uh, because people want to get back in to keep on earning. So yeah, it's not an insurmountable problem, just a pain in the ass. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. Do we want cool. to turn it to, is there anyone else that's attending um, at the moment, have any questions that they want to throw up or anything they want to introduce either through the chat on the left or you can unmute yourself and, and speak. If no one else has anything, I do have on the Rari side of things. Um, we've created a Rari pool. Uh, for NFTX, which ha if anyone's familiar with Rari, it's a money market like Compound where you can uh, deposit assets and interest from people that borrow your assets and you can borrow against your own assets uh, to leverage your position. Um, so Rari allows for that and we've got a pool set up for um, NFTX and Punk tokens and you can borrow uh, DAI and ETH or you could deposit ETH. Um, against punk so uh it would be like the first use case of uh at least with a kind of major protocol for borrowing against nft like uh, fractionalized nfts which we think could be a massive use case uh, as a DAO, we just need to decide on how much to seed um to kick off the pool so um we're thinking of seeding nftx tokens and some punk tokens uh, this would give like enough liquidity for people to start um, potentially shorting uh, or uh, you know adding uh, other assets and, and uh, growing it organically. So um, if anyone ha has any experience with Rari and would like to, to kind of come up with any suggestions, uh, we can chat about it now or kind of later on on Discord. Uh, but yeah, that's something that we're looking to launch next week. Yeah, and I've also been in talks um, with TracerDAO and a couple other protocols. So uh, lots of interest on the DeFi side lately, which is great. Yeah, yeah that's the pool that Quag just put in the chat. I mean, it's, um, I think when we first started out NFTX, it was like, it, it felt like the bridge between DeFi and NFTs in many ways. And I think we're now a year on almost. Finally arriving. Started. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, with the liquidity there, it's building. Um, so I think yeah. we'll start seeing a really cool use of NFTs and DeFi now as well. And, um, you know, using NFTX to, to generate yield from, from JPEGs, which is nice. Yeah, that's what we all want. <laughs> Passive income from our JPEGs. <laughs> cool. Should we, should we call it? Yeah, I think so. If anyone else has anything else, last things, last chance. Hey, uh, this is Aito. Yep. Hey, Aito. Oh, hey, dude. How's it going? Um, hey, yeah, sorry for joining late. Um, do we all, already cover um, anything about, like, NFTX, the token, and, like, tokenomics and, like, plans for that? We, we didn't, but I'm, I'm glad you actually brought it up because I was, I was thinking I'd like to touch on it. Um, I will say that I'm a little biased. I'm probably 
I, I'm not like a huge fan of utility. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, not, not that I'm not a huge fan of utility, but I, I get, um, I worry that by adding um, small bits of utility, people start um, valuing the token based on that utility um, and start looking for more utility. Um, and, you know, ultimately, I think long term, like three to five years out, the value of the token will basically depend on our product um, and how many, you know, how much revenue the platform is generating um, and how many users um, and that utility is. Yeah. So basically, yeah, I'm a little biased against utility, but I know other people on the team don't feel quite as, as biased as myself. Um, and I'm definitely open to adding it. If like community members and stuff like yourself um, have ideas for that, I'm, I'm definitely open to them. Um, it's just not something that I've like come by naturally, really. Um, but if you want to, if you want to discuss like your proposal quickly, Ado, and then maybe so other people that haven't read it. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's mostly just like a brainstorming. But um, I guess my main point is like by ignoring the token, we're not you we're not allowing us to well, like the the product and the project is not able to use it effectively in like bootstrapping growth and like driving more adoption um and i feel like that it's it's really a shame because like in a web3 world like like a, your token is should be like like front and center along with everything else along with good product along with like you know good good vision whatever um yeah it's just like the the, the token is such an important part and like 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 the things I feel like NFTX are ignoring is like the token and like community um, involvement and like nurturing the like a like a like a rabid fan base right like the, your your like a thousand crazy loyal loyal fans um, like you, you just you, like maybe maybe they exist but you don't really hear them that that much right like you get people coming in now and then um, asking questions about like mo mostly just like like product support product quest yeah um, yeah and then like, you don't get people hang out you don't you're not we're, we're not building like like a um like a super concentrated like a core loyal fan base and i feel like like just observing a lot of other like projects the most successful ones do have that um and like of course you have you have the, like the huge project like like um like uniswap whatever right that like they have a token they don't really do anything with it but like everybody uses them whatever um but unless you're at that scale, I feel like you really do need to focus on like, like your, your token. When people think about Niftix, they don't, they don't, um, they don't really envision like the 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 platform. They also they also think about the token, right? The token, its price, um, how it's been trading, and like like what you can do with it. So so I feel like we're just we're kind of just mm -hmm. ignoring it and and like at the expense of not. Um, yeah, like it's 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 just a huge risk, right? Because like if you, there's there's a lot of products and projects trying to tackle this this space right now, right? Like you you have like Genie, um, like JPEG, whatever. Like you have a lot of these 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 projects. Um, and like I feel like we need to use the the token to like work with us on on driving forward. So, um, yeah, I mean, I I definitely don't want to um, shut that idea down because like as founder that wouldn't be cool. Um, I. I will say like, I feel qu quite differently. Like um, I've always kind of felt that I really dislike it when DeFi projects put their token front and center. Um, like I, I've always really liked Uniswap, how their token has nothing to do with their product. Like it's separate um, because in most, in most cases, like, you know, the, the token having it in the product can actually add friction in, in some cases. Um, like, like for instance, on Sushi, I know in the past I've gotten confused because it's like they have staking for their own token and then they also have like staking for the liquidity pools and it's like two types of staking and mm -hmm. one of them is basically just superfluous, the t you know, taking their own token. Um, it, just, it just lets people feel engaged. I also think there's been other NFT platforms um, like the universe dot X, Y, Z or whatever that have really yeah. gone with yeah. this community first token approach and then basically flopped because their product isn't that great. Um, 
I, I know what you mean though. Like I know we, we're definitely lacking that. And as far as an NFT project goes, like these other NFT projects, they have really strong communities. Those are like cults almost. Um, and it is something we're lacking and we kind of used to have like early in the year. Yeah. Um, the, like yeah. being, being, being product led, I think is 100% the right way to go. I just don't think we should, we should ignore the token, which like, as as many Uniswap examples are, there are, there are like a hundred more that, like or like ten x more that, like, projects that have ignored the token and, and failed, right? So like we're kind of looking at survivorship bias bias a little bit when when we're talking about some of these examples. Um, yeah. The, the one thing about our token though is we are we do have like a massive treasury. Like we're basically as low as we can go now in our token. But I mean, I guess we could go lower. But like. Um, so it's not like we're gonna die, but <laughs> yeah. everything Ato said, I think, is like is accurate. Like we don't have that rabid community of people that just absolutely live and breathe NFTX, and I think that is because we don't have a token that does all these like in many ways like kind of makes great promises. I think there are definitely tokens that do that, and I guess I probably feel similar to Alex in that, like. I don't think we need to make a decision on like if you do something now to make utility from a token you can't undo that like that's like you're stuck with that like you're gonna have to try and unwind it at some point if it doesn't work out or whatever and i think by just keeping your options open over time um you can do more with it but also why the... why 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 are you stuck with utility because if... people as soon as you give people utility it's like that scene from Silicon Valley um, where like Russ Hanneman says, as soon as you give people profit, investors always want more profit. And I think mm. it's the same with utility. Like then people start saying, okay, the utility is here. The token's worth this much. So if we double you the utility, then we can get the token up worth more. And you end up, you end up fixating on this utility. Um, I, I will say this, Ado. I will, I will say this much, and maybe this will help. Um, I'm like, I am super keen to get us to the point where we have like a rabid community and um, people and we have like, you know, front and center on the website, like talking about the token, the value prop and, you know, having more open community forums and governance and all this stuff. Um, and it's like, it's, it's definitely something I want, I want us to get to. Um, and personally, I see that kind of happening like around like January, February ish, um, just because we're so we're still going through like a lot of growing pains. Um, a lot of our vaults are still pretty illiquid. We still have a lot of core features mm. that we just haven't pumped out yet. Like the profiles, um, you know, better dashboards. Um, and I, yeah, it's like people come to discord and I want to engage them, but it's like, at the same time, we are still kind of going through these growing pains and it's like, we're just so close. Um, so I, I think that's probably why I'm more against um, switching gears now is just because we're, we're so hard in like the dev mode um, and just like heads down. Uh, would you, would you kind of agree with that, Nick? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah it's we've like flat out on product um, and most of the team focused on product and protocol. So it's like finding time to come up with like a good mechanism for the token is something that is maybe like a luxury when we have, I think, I think people would see NFTX, the platform, see the product and think, wow, okay, this team has a lot of growth ahead of them. And I think people will find valuation models that don't require like utility at this point. And maybe it's something we come to, I mean, we, we were talking like as a team with this like liquidity problem that, that Alex was just referring to there, like with Basie, um, whether we like find ways to like incentivize with like liquidity mining, that kind of thing using the NFT to X token. And that could like help with distribution, help with getting more people engaged. Like it'd be very targeted and we kind of need a product that can sustain it. So I think one thing we don't want to do is just hand out liquidity rewards and just hope things kind of like tick over mm -hmm. after that. We want to have like the this strategic that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and we think we're like almost at a product where if we inject some liquidity rewards, then we'll have um, mm -hmm. a, like a self-sustaining vault after that. So we could, you know, build basically to like a multi-million dollar um liquidity vault which would then allow us to you know put it in rari and do all, all kinds of things um mm. so there is that okay. i don't know if that's yeah. like of interest to you um yeah no that that all makes sense um after hearing you guys talk about this i, I am more convinced that like yeah having like focusing on the product and and keeping kind of 
optionality for like what we do with the token would be good. Um, like the, the the other thing that that I think would also be good. Just just not 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 talking about the token at, at this point, but um, like like just looking at J, JPEG and seeing how they're using um a chain link oracle to like look at punk price. Like you you could very well just take the 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 punk vault index right or the the punk the punk vault price as that that um that price and um I, I think like some of these biz dev um biz dev initiatives to like just get nftx vaults used everywhere right before like like the alpha products um jpeg whatever i think would be awesome and and like like as well you guys are talking about the the fuse pool which i think is really cool too because now you can like basically short punks yeah yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's interesting you mentioned that about the Chainlink oracles because I was on a call just yesterday with Tracer Dow, um, and they're basically wanting to do that, um, and they're going to be referencing, I think, the, a combination of like Chainlink and then also the NFTX price feeds. Um, so, yeah, it's um, it's cool seeing that okay. stuff starting to happen. Um, cool. Good to hear. And, to and hear. yeah, I'm 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 totally with you. Like another another thing, like we're seeing in the NFT space is just how like if you have a strong community, you can raise so much money from doing NFT drops. Um, and it's something that we've it's like tried to stray away from. But at this point, like it feels like if we could, you know, get to the point where we have like a strong community, um, we're doing like seasonal NFT drops within the, within the community and finding artists. And, mm. you know, we're, we're in a great position basically to be like a, a community hub for the, like the NFT Ethereum space. Um, and we're not at all filling that right now. Um, yeah, like basically, and, basically yeah. seeing seeing how seeing how uh, uh, Pernelope that that project mm -hmm. like basically like the the way they're using the vaults to like create protocol owned liquidity and like like supporting the the floor prices. I think that's amazing, and it's basically saying like like you can you can be the ohm for NFTs, right? You mm -hmm. can you can be you can do like like. Um, you can help all NFT projects basically create more or like have protocol totally. liquidity. Um, yeah. and, and that's what we're seeing is that people that, that actually like kind of dive in and use the NFTX product like fully, they have a great experience. Um, I think we're increasingly realizing like that these are probably the users to focus on. Um, and it's like, and possibly even reward them for being early users and really try to like bring them into the ecosystem. Um, yeah, like Pernelope's and HD Punks, and uh, now like with the Mana Vault, um, vaults like that have just been doing great. Um, yeah, but, but so like, yeah. It's, it's like how do you how do you get projects to how do you get projects to be aware of 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 these things, right? How do you get that yeah, get that yeah. noise it, out there? It it is yeah. It's I'm hoping it ha it happens organically, so, but yeah. I think a big part of that like maybe comes back to profiles and having NFTX as just the just the known place to go to to manage and look at your assets like that would be one big step and then you know yeah and we're so close to that right that. now um it's one thing like we say like you know in two months like i hardly use nftx right now i use it a bit i might check it like once or twice a day but i don't use it nearly as much as OpenSea. um and mm -hmm. i'm i'm hoping that like in like four to six weeks we're getting to the point where it's like okay now i'm checking my portfolio like as much on nftx um, and just getting it to the point that like, you know, we're all using it on a daily basis, like super users kind of, um, yeah, yeah for no, sure. getting, for sure. getting close and, and I do appreciate the, like the, the ideas. Um, and I, I will, I'll follow up on your post later too, as well. Um, because I, it's, it's good to, you know, start, um, working on ideas for utility, even if it is, does feel a little bit early for us. Um, you know, it's never, never too early. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how can we, as the community, help right now? Uh, what can I would we do? say the, the biggest thing is just like support on Discord. Um, like everyone on the team is really is is good about pitching in and offering help when they can. Um, but sometimes we just get a lot of questions, or sometimes we're not always there. Um, so yeah, for now, I think the best thing is basically support on Discord and. Um, Hopping and into I guess other like, discords too. Yeah, like, true. So like uh, I've been other in NFT ones. communities. Yeah, and if they like, like if you're, an icon, if you're part I'm of like... our community, be like, hey, have you heard of NFTX? Like you guys put in some money and yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, and Quags just put in the chat as well, like having someone on the NFTX intern account would be really useful. Oh. So just like, you know, if we if we had someone, so that's a role we want to fill. It's like so someone, basically mm -hmm. someone, yeah, being this kind of um, champion going around other discords and yeah. Our, our, our own chain link god. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I know I know what you mean about how that's lacking right now. And I, I do think, yeah, we're going really hard on product and we're shipping really fast. But I, I do think it will come time to, to shift gears um, in a few months. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for the thoughts. No, thank yeah, you. no. Th yeah, thanks for bringing it up. I'm glad we got to talk about that. Cool. Um, all right. Anyone else want to have any thoughts? Um, may I? Yeah, go for it. Oh, yeah. Um, is this the platform? Um, well, is this opportunity to talk about the rarity thing, sure, or yeah. should we hold that off? No, it's good. Rarity API yeah. that you're building, yeah. Okay. So at the moment, we have a system that's based on, or well, the API that's based on rarity tools. Off of that scraped data, though, there's also been talks about maintaining a custom set of traits. I think that was by Javery. So if we're already maintaining a list of traits, wouldn't it be better to make a well-documented, more public uh, formula that would then be used, since that would also allow us to index collections faster and add more collections on it than, for instance, Rarity Tools or Nifty River? Yeah, actually, it's funny. Javery and I were just saying that before the call, how if we're already saving all the, the metadata and all the attributes data already, that it probably makes more sense to process the rarity data ourselves um, rather than scraping it. Is, is, that, is that what you mean? Like coming up with our own, our own algorithm instead of scraping mm -hmm. the data? Mm -hmm. That's what I... If I quote it from what I told Nick, having your own formula, not having to say that you conform to anyone or scrape a website is more is the most maintainable, or so I would presume. Because yeah. you don't have to conform, or if you don't have to update to someone else's standard, then yeah. that's the best. Definitely, and it's also the easiest to explain to a community because you can just show them or tell them how it's done. Um, and you can even tweak it and and fork it and stuff. Um, how 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 difficult do you think that would be? Um, for you to do I've quantumly. Been... I've been playing around with the documentation laid out by Nifty River and Rarity Tools to discover a nice algorithm. And if we have all the trade data indexed somewhere, we might be able to do a daily refresh of it. Or we could also do on-fly calculations with a request of the API. Just have to come up with a formula that's either original or based off of someone else. Um. Oh, yeah, so you're correct. Um, w why would we have to do a daily update? Um, it was just an idea because either if a collection is still opening or if they're still being revealed, the oh, data might update. Right, 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 right. Uh, oh, like, so just check, like check for an update. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that'd be great. Um, that definitely makes more sense. Um, I think it'd be kind of fun too, coming up with the formula. <laughs> Yeah, I guess at that point you become almost responsible. Like there's a level of responsibility there, right? If you mess up and you become like God like, for the whole floor. market. Yeah. Yeah. You can choose. So like this is security like considerations. I don't know. Yeah. It's uh, Yeah, St stringy haired spotted punks are all of a sudden the rarest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That pretty great to sell. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that that's cool. I think that'd be great if we could do that in house. Um, and like, just for anyone listening in, basically the hope is to get it so we can overlay rarity data um, on the UI, because um, a lot of users say how they switch back and forth between um, rarity tools and NFTX. So um, yeah, it'd be a nice nice experience for users. There could be a if the community wants it. There could possibly be a temporary pilot showing the currently scrape the data for let me just double check which oh. it was um so they could at least get used to it and see how the it would help them with their marketing decisions mm -hmm. because at the moment we have indexed two crew pernalopes ava star hash masks and cryptodes oh has, has quag already done a front end for this no not yet. i'm not oh. sure okay yeah no, not yet it's soon but yeah I, I imagine it would be it would be pretty like straightforward to get it on the front end 
yeah. has has JB um has he done a design no, yet for got, that? We haven't mocked up anything oh, yet. I think okay. probably. But I think he like I think he's keen for that. The response. Yeah. yeah. Um, you you want to get those the rarity stuff going, right, JB? I sure do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah no the front end's looking really good yeah the filters tomorrow like that's i think oh yeah, that's we'll been be huge. very happy with that upgrade i think it's a long time coming it just shipping so fast i love it um super pumped for profiles um yeah and we're getting close to show mode we're almost at show mode soon um so yeah, I think that's that's all good. Um, if we find the pilot, we can post that on Discord. Cool. Nice. I guess Jabri's gone, so I'll I'll be calling it. Um, anything else? All good. Well, um, it's nice it's nice hearing your voice quantumly, and it's nice having you around the team. Um, younger have to or get... older, if I may ask, younger or oh, older, yeah. older than you expected. Oh, are you are you older than I expected? Or, I mean, how much or, did you expect? I, Kiwi, Kiwi told you, I think. Kiwi said you were eighteen. Yeah, he is correct in that. <laughs> oh wow, wow. Okay, yeah, you sound older. <laughs> That's cool. I wish I was eighteen. Eighteen, uh, doing this. Yes, perfect. Yeah, nice to get into the space, young. Um, all right, cool. Cheers, guys. Okay, yeah. So uh, thanks for coming on the call, guys. Um, we'll see you here first Wednesday of November. I don't know what day it is. Check your calendars. And, um, yeah, I'll talk to the guys on the team later. Thanks, guys. Nice. See you. All right. See you guys. See you. See you. Bye.